It doesn't matter if we're late. It doesn't matter if it's a Monday, Wednesday, a Saturday, a Sunday, any day. It could be like a Friday or it could be again a Tuesday. There's always a lot going on today. And that day that's going on, it's a lot of what? It's a lot of breaking news. Come on. All right, I have been wound up, but I hope you had a great 4th of July, everybody. I hope you had a fantastic 4th of July, lit some fireworks, kissed some babies, and, you know, ate those cupcakes, uh, ate some hot dogs, hamburgers, or some vegan dogs, if you will, and just enjoyed your 4th of July, because it was a great holiday just to celebrate with fans and family and everybody else, because that's what you gotta do, and it's a day to relax, think about who you are, what you're gonna do next, and just conquer, conquer the year. Uh, but someone didn't have a great 4th of July was Danny Trejo, because Danny Trejo got hit with a water balloon while he was driving in a parade and his vintage car for the big celebration of the 4th of July in Sunland and he got pissed. He got off his car and started beating the shit out of the guy and then the other guy attacked him then his best friend got there and he started getting into a fight and he got his head all busted up. He did not go to jail. No one got to jail. Before the cops actually came, this was broken up uh, but a bystander got a video about this if you want to watch it online. It's kind of interesting to see. No arrests, no incidents but uh, he did call it, Danny Trejo called it very childish and that's why he did attack them but he did beat the shit out of that guy so I mean uh, Batista uh, stays for the entire show. He should. He's a friend of the show. I love, we love Dave. We love Dave. For Dave Gang. Hopefully that uh, you know nothing happens from this. You never know because sometimes people might sue later. But Dave Dreho, man, uh, don't beat people up, man. I know you do it in TV, but be very careful. Okay, just be very careful. But that might be happening. But a strike may be still lingering on the uh, outskirts of Hollywood because, of course, Ayatsi got the deal. But the Teamsters, everybody, are who to watch right now because the Teamsters are not fucking around. The Teamsters came for their bargaining power is going big. They said, hey. And PTP is not giving us what we need so far. They went away from the table. They were supposed to meet on Wednesday last week. They decided not to because of the holiday. Took the whole week off and they sat down today. Their contract ends at the end of the month and they are not feeling good about it. And they said they will they will, they will strike if it doesn't go. They said next week, which is this week, we hope that we see the AMPTP ready to sit down at the table and be prepared to bargain and care about the issues our members face. And that's nearly 7,000 members. So hopefully they can figure it out. If they don't, it'll take even more longer to get fucking Stranger Things because Stranger Things is delayed, delayed, delayed. And they said it's take a fucking year for this to come out. It's crazy. A year for Stranger Things to shoot? That's insane to me. But they're saying that it's eight episodes and eight episodes are like, mini features, which it kind of did before, like mini feature long things. But uh, one of the cast members came forward talking about this, and she said, okay guys, we're basically making eight movies, so just calm down, it's coming very soon. Uh, this was Hawk, actually. And she was just saying like, okay, I just be prepared to wait. You'll love this show. You want to see it. They're all excited about it, but it is coming. But if a strike happens, God, we're not going to get Stranger Things for like three years. So <sighs> we won't be <laughs> celebrating, but we won't be GR. We won't be not celebrating, but Kevin Spacey is celebrating because, well, he's getting a Lifetime Achievement Award again. Again, the second time. Second time. Apparently, Italy wants to give him a Lifetime Achievement Award uh, at this special event at the Gala, they're calling it, in the historic southern Italian town of Timornia. Uh, in July, this is going down. Not too long when it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a historic evening. He's actually going to do a performance, too, on top of this. So, again, I was talking to somebody, I think it was like Mr. Banks, Tim Banks, talking about this, and he's like, will Kevin Spacey come back? And I was like, oh, he's already coming back. He's already coming back. Look at this fool. He's getting like, Lifetime Achievement Awards. He's got other movies coming out. He will come back. He was found guilty in all of his causes, but then more and more people are coming forward. So, Will he be okay? What do you think, Carter? Kevin Spacey going to be okay? Oh, in this world, anything goes, Brian Cruz. I tell you what, with the world on fire, you never know anymore. You just don't know, Carter. You just don't know. It's like when you know someone so well, you think you can respect them and honor them. You're fine. The relationship, that business relationship, and that personal relationship is going well. All of a sudden, it doesn't. And ask Coldplay about that because Coldplay has been settling a lawsuit finally with their old manager, okay? This has been going on. Their ex-manager, Dave Holmes, was seeking out $12 million for unpaid commissions over there from Coldplay. Uh, Travis C, you're right. 12 million bucks. And I was like, how can you even say that? What's this for? And he was saying that it's for their upcoming albums. Their upcoming albums, he said that he deserved commission for getting a bunch of the, the works got done for that. Now, right now, they settled for seven figures. So he did get money. Um, he didn't get that 12 million, but unpaid commissions for Coldplay's 10th and 11th albums this is for. Now they're coming out soon, but he said that he had to do with recording sessions, clearing samples and liaison with producer Max Martin, Martin uh, in order to get this done. So he does get paid for that time. So honestly, Coldplay, Coldplay paid. So at the end of the day, they sell them figure it out because you don't want to go to court ask the person who broke into Marlon Wayne's house you don't want to go to court but they got away and Marlon Wayne's house was broken into and he was talking about this recently in an interview and he said guys uh, he posted this on Thursday he said pick a better target 
just pick a better target because the most valuable thing in my house is my house. So if you put that in a truck and like drive it off the property, yeah, it's great. Take it, take it, got it. That's the most important thing. But if you can't, then there's no reason to break in my house. He wasn't home during the thing. No one was hurt. No one was injured. Uh, his brother, Keenan, was there, but it was he was fine. This was around 2.30 in the morning on June 29th. Uh, just don't break into people's houses. Don't do that. And also, I'm so happy they're saving Marilyn Monroe's house because Marilyn Monroe was a fucking gem to Hollywood. Honestly, oh my God, Marilyn Monroe. We all fucking love her. It sounds ominous. Yeah, it does. Uh, but we love her so much, but the Los Angeles City Council voted unanimously, unanimously on Wednesday to designate her house a historic cultural monument because the owner of the house is trying to tear the whole fucking place down. Try to tear the whole place down. Get rid of it. Done with it. JR doesn't like that. I don't think we'll get his hot take soon. Uh, but they're going to tear the whole place down and they, it was blocked by the commission for demolition effects. So now forever and ever, forever and ever and ever, this will be a historic monument to uh, showcase the beauty that rocked Hollywood. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and JR, what do you got to say about Marilyn Monroe, JR? I could tell you, I hear you got something in your throat. What you thinking, man? Well, I, Marilyn was a great actress and all that shit, but come on, it's a the house is a piece of crap in the middle of some incredible mansions, and the person that bought it wanted to build a better house, and now he's stuck with that piece of crap in the middle <laughs> of a great neighborhood. The, the city just, My apologies you know, to you, a sir. Publicity stunt for the. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, GR. That's a good point. And there's always two sides of the coin, right? There's always two sides of the coin. But we look at her as being like this national treasure, right, Carter? We see her, we see her skirt fly up in the air under that fucking vent in, in the curves and what she did and with her and Kennedy and what she brought to cinema. She was like the first, like one of the first sex symbols, I think. And you know, a lot of people love the fuck out of her. So be close to one of the first, Brian. Well, I mean, for a lot of a lot of people back all the way to the t- Tens and twenties. Yeah, but she had a sex appeal not a lot of girls had. Carter, do you agree with me at all? She she had a sex appeal that was different, right? Wasn't it? Or am I fucking crazy? I feel like she really revolutionized it in so many ways. Just like Elvis revolutionized rock and roll. I feel it's the mm-hmm. same way that uh, um, Marilyn Monroe was to the sex symbol image, per se. She wasn't the first to ever do it, just like Elvis didn't invent rock and roll. I, yeah. But still, these two people, in their own ways, aren't only American icons. They are classical, you know, basically the sex symbol icons of their time. It's very I true. love that guy. Well, said Carter of their time. <laughs> Pe- 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 loves him. <laughs> Pe- 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 like Carter. You happy Carter's in the show? You damn right. Because you, because <laughs> he was he 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 was Cho Dog before on this show. So uh, you want to talk about Cho Dog? Pe- crazy. <laughs> okay, we won't talk about that. We won't talk about that. Uh, but yeah, Marilyn Monroe's house has been saved, everybody. So honestly, I see why they did it, you know. And something else might be being saved pretty soon is Highlander because Highlander is moving forward. The John Wick director, Chad Stalinsky, has officially said that in January, we are starting to shoot Highlander. There can be only one with, of course, Henry Cavill taking the sword and fucking suiting up, ready to fucking chop off some heads and find out if he is the one at the end game. But will that happen? We don't know. We'll find out. I'm excited about this. I, like, I think Henry Cavill makes sense for this franchise. We've been waiting for this for a long time. The first one came out in 1986. And Slinsky says he's going to revolutionize the sword fight in this. So get ready for that, guys. I don't know what that fucking means, but you know what? I'm down for it. Maybe it'll be something like... Henry Cavill doing flips and shit and doing a sword fight. I don't know. I'm all about it. But please, please make Highlander great. And I'm sorry that at home, our outer, outer Range won't be great because Outer Range is canceled. If you watch this show, Outer Range over on Amazon got canceled for two seasons. Now, they did two seasons. It was like two months ago when the last season aired. They hoped it was, it was doing really well. It was doing really freaking well. They thought it'd be coming back with Josh Brolin. But unfortunately, like the last seven episodes, uh, Amazon decided it's done. It's just done. And honestly... I didn't watch it. I'm like, I kind of wanted to watch it. It looked cool. I watched like the first episode I didn't fall into. But if you're a fan of this, please let me know because I want to know if this should be saved and if you think it will be saved because like sometimes these shows will disappear and then also like a bad trick, they appear again in a different network. It happens. And speaking of magic tricks, now you see me. Three is moving forward. Finally, we have a release date for this. Jesse Eisenberg's coming back. I mean, there's a lot of people. Morgan Freeman, Isla Fisher, Mark Ruffalo. I mean, you got a big cast. David Franco, Woody Harrelson, huge cast. This is a magic magical cast and I love it so much I think they're they're fun movies they're fun movies I mean they're not amazing movies but they're fun movies it's worth a shot to watch but November 14th 2025 the new one's coming out the third one and it's going to reintroduce this group to a new group of people because it's been a long time since we had a new one we'll be good we'll do great 
only a match trick can decide. I, I think it will be fun. And hopefully it's great, because honestly, at the end of the day, magic is amazing. Look at Harry Potter. He makes so much fucking money. He has magic. It's great. But now there's this whole thing that happened. This is insane to me. The very first print from Sorcerer's of Stone, like the graphic, just sold that at auction. For take a guess how much, guys. Take a guess how much. 1.9. 1.9 million dollars. Woo! Oh my god. And there were like four people bidding at the very end in the last 10 minutes. Like, give me this fucking Harry Potter magic. They wanted it. Great for them. I mean, if you're, I, I, I get it. If you're a Harry Potter fan, maybe this is very important. And this is from 1997, very first print. I mean, it is a one of a kind thing. So I get it. But also like I would, if even if I had 1.9 billion bucks or a million bucks, I would not spend it on this. I'm sorry. Maybe I spent on the Deathstalker remake, uh, which probably won't because I've never seen this movie, but this is moving forward. Uh, and I don't know if I want to see this, guys. I didn't watch the original one. It looks kind of campy uh it's about a guy who's controlled by a witch to go out there and save the universe but they're doing a lot of practical effects which is great and i think that's amazing and i think that what they're going to do with this the inner workings of this if you're a fan of this it might be a great rework we talked about enemy mine not too long ago and that was like very dated this is like an 80s movie um but hopefully this is good for a new generation i have no idea but this movie um uh this was actually for lexi i'll ask her about this next time but uh death stalker is moving forward just like the morning show is too and jeremy irons everybody Jeremy Irons has joined the morning show to play Jennifer Aniston's dad. Like, fuck yeah. What a great cast. Like, I, I love Jeremy Irons. He's fucking great. Uh, Queen, of course you do, Queen. Of course you have Death Soccer. Uh, tell me if it's good, if it's worth a reboot. Please tell me, because I'm not really sold on it. I'm not, I'm not sold on it. But Jeremy Irons, I'm always sold on Fuck yeah, Scar, one of the meanest, baddest bitches in the world. Like, him during Batman being, like, Fucking being Alfred, great. Loved, I love that shit so much. But him playing her father, he's gonna be just giving her so much shit with two looks, no words, two looks. Uh, I can't wait for it. I'm excited about it. But also, Marion Cotillard also signed on too to be a part of this too. Which, what is this new season? I, this show keeps getting bigger and bigger talent attached. Not that Jennifer Aniston isn't a huge, you know, not that, you know, they've had a bad, big cast before, but I just think they keep adding it up every season. But uh, Marion Cotillard is playing a savvy operator from a storied European family. But I'm excited about season four of The Morning Show, and I'm excited to see where Apple TV takes us from there. But a lot of breaking news, everybody. A lot of fucking breaking news. <laughs>